All right. Well, let's find our way to our mat, dog or not. <laughs> I have a block here. Maybe we'll use that. Let's take a few moments to settle into our practice. Find your way to your breath. Looks like a statue there just standing. Begin to release all of your day. We'll go with the theme of releasing tension today. So just letting go of anything that you don't need, anything that isn't serving you. Let's begin to start some gentle movement with the neck. So if the hands are not already on the lap, just go ahead and place them there, palms down. Let's take the left ear to the left shoulder. Find that nice stretch. And then as you exhale, just allow the head to circle forward and all the way over to the right shoulder. We'll pause here, take a nice big in breath. And then again, as you exhale, just let the head circle forward to the other shoulder. We'll keep going like that from right to left. And left to right. Let's go ahead and hold on that left side. Bring the left hand to the top of the head and reach the right arm out nice and long. Take that nice big stretch there. Let the head fall forward. Bring the hands to the back of the neck, or the back of the head, I mean, and just let the elbows fall forward. Right ear to the right shoulder. Take that nice stretch. Use the head on top, hand on top of the head. And then go ahead and release. Nice. Let's begin with a nice easy forward fold today. So bringing both feet out in front of you, extend the legs nice and long, flex through the feet. And with your hands on the mat, because it's early yet, so we're going to do more of a, we call this caterpillar, where we do more of a kind of roll forward, tuck your chin in towards the chest, and just start to roll the body towards the legs. Let your elbows kind of come by your sides. Notice where the tension shows up here for you. So this is a good indicator of what's going on in the back body. So maybe it shows up in the legs, maybe the lower back or the upper back. Use your hands, walk them back by your seat, start to stack your vertebrae. So you're sitting up nice and tall. Bend the right knee, bring it to the outside of the left, your foot to the outside of the left leg. And just taking a gentle twist here. So just wrap the left arm around the knee and look over the right shoulder. Beautiful. Come back through center. Go ahead and extend that right leg out nice and long and just take that twist to the other side, placing that foot on the mat, wrap the elbow around the knee and look out the back, off the back shoulder here.
Nice. And then go ahead and release. Come on back. Take those legs and let's find our way to our tabletop, assuming Maggie shares the mat with me today. I guess I'll move forward. <laughs> so we'll take a few rounds of cat and cow, pushing the hands and knees into the mat, tucking the chin, rounding the back, hollowing out the back body here. This is home yoga, right? This is what happens sometimes you have distractions. Inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly, lift the heart. Exhale to round. Inhale to lift. Nice. Let's find that nice neutral spine here. Walk the left hand in so that it's right underneath your nose. And then sweep the right arm up. Kind of wring out any tension we might be holding on to. Exhale, we're going to scoop that right hand underneath and reach for the back wall. Exhale and wring out. And then inhale and lift. Exhale and wring it out. Inhale and lift, and then ring it out, and reach. On this one, we're going to go ahead and come down for the landing. So come down onto the right arm, onto that shoulder. I like to walk my left hand out in front of me and kind of come out onto the right side of the face. You can hang out here. So this is more than enough. You don't need to do anything more. But if you want to, you can always sweep the arm around behind the back. Go ahead and unwind, unravel. Sweep that right arm up towards the sky one more time. And then bring the right hand down. So let's go to the left side. Inhale, reach up. And then ring it out as you reach. Inhale to lift. Ring it out. <laughs> and reach. And then go ahead and exhale and ring it out. Bring that right hand overhead. Walk the right hand back. Come all the way back up to tabletop. So setting that left hand on the mat, move the left knee in, and then step the right foot out to the end of your mat there, and come on up to our gate pose. So that right foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat. And then we're just going to bring the hands behind the head and take a little lean over towards that right foot and then over towards the left. So just opening up through the obliques here a little bit, over towards the right and the left. And then this time we're gonna drop that right hand down and reach that left arm up towards the sky. Nice, all the way back up through center and then step both knees in. So now we're right in our pre-camel pose, <laughs> bring the hands around behind. So if you had pockets, you'd put your hands in your pockets, fingers pointing down, squeeze the elbows together, put a little bit of support into the lower back or right on the top of your booty there, and then lift the heart up and open up. Beautiful, and then from here, we're going to sink down, release the hands, let's find our way to a child's pose. So just momentarily, just counterposing that little modified camel shape. And then walk the hands back, step that left foot out and find your way into that gate pose, second side, we're gonna take those oblique stretches, so elbow towards the thigh and then elbow towards the mat. And two more. 
the last one over towards the right and then the left fingertips come down the right hand goes up reach long overhead look down towards the left foot Beautiful. Come all the way back through center. We're going to take that camel one more time. If you want, if you want to go a little deeper, you can take a full camel. So you can curl the toes under so that the heels are a little bit higher. Same thing. You start by pressing the hands to the lower back. And then as you push forward with the hips and you open up the heart, you might reach one hand down and then the other to grab onto the heels and find a deeper back bend. That's a lot. So if you do just that modified camel and you enjoy that back bend there, that's perfect. That's all you really need. Nice, engage to the belly. Come on back out of that. We're gonna find that child's pose one more time. I'm gonna turn so I'm on my mat. <laughs> and then reach the arms nice and long down the mat. Let's go ahead and find our way to our first downward facing dog of the day. So curling the toes under, lift the hips up and back, and maybe you bend the knees here. <laughs> maybe you paddle out the feet, drop the head. Now because of where my camera is, I'm going to step my left foot forward so that I can be facing you. Left foot is gonna go forward. If you're facing the different way, then you can go ahead and step the other foot back. We're just coming into our warrior two here. So opening up left arm forward, right arm back, or whichever will make sense. Nice, that weather is really bothering her. She's shaking. Right hand is going to come down. So it's just like in that gate pose. You're just going to reach up with that left arm and enjoy that nice big stretch here. And then on your exhale, the left hand comes down, the right arm reaches up and over. Beautiful, back into that warrior two. We're gonna take about two breaths here just to enjoy this stretch. Really clarify the pose, build it from the ground up. Root down through the feet, relax the shoulders. Nice. Go ahead and interlace the fingers behind your back. Open that heart. And then so we're going to hinge from the hips and fold down in the middle. So the tendency is to try to go one way or the other. We're going right down the middle with that left knee bent and that right leg straight. It's a bit of a balance challenge. And then go ahead and drop the hands to the mat. We're going to turn the toes so that they're at about 10 and two and find our way into our modified goddess. Just crawl your hands up to your knees and then just take a little side to side here. You can even turn and look over the right shoulder and over the left. Nice. And then find your way to that goddess pose. So the toes are out, the heels are in, the knees are pointing towards the second toes, stacking your shoulders over your hips. And then if, again, if this shape is not for you, you can always be a little bit higher here. I like my hands at heart center. You can close your eyes if that feels good. And then press those knees back towards that back wall, opening up. Nice. Hands come all the way down to the mat, straighten the legs, turn the toes so that they're facing the front of your mat and just fold down and melt. Just shake it out. We're releasing any tension we might have picked up there. Inhale for a half lift. We're going to turn the right toes to the back of the mat or whichever foot is at the back of the mat and find your way into that warrior two. Flip the palm. We're going to flow. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, elbow to knee, reach long overhead. Let's go ahead and reverse. And find your way back to that warrior two. We're gonna hold on this side for about three breaths. Relax your shoulders. Not surprisingly, I have dog hair in my mouth. Nice, go ahead and straighten the legs. So again, turning the toes out, the heels in, we're just going to fold down and find our way into that goddess shape one more time. So the toes are at about 45 degrees, bend the knees, bring the hands to the knees and just take this gentle side to side. We're gonna work in some twists here along with, along with our warriors. All right, stack your shoulders over your hips. Oh, we forgot that fold. Good, go ahead and straighten those legs, turn the toes so they're parallel to the mat and then hinge and fold forward. Left hand comes down. You're going to reach your right arm up towards the sky and look up, take that nice twist here. Right hand comes down, left hand reaches up. I'm getting all kinds of snap crackle pops here. Left hand comes down. This time we're going to turn towards that back foot or that right foot and fold down over. So it's a forward fold and a twist at the same time. If you can't come all the way to the leg, that's not the end of the world. Nice, find a nice half lift here. Keep the left hand on the mat. You can't see it because there's an obstacle there, but you're just gonna turn that right foot towards the back of the mat. That left foot stays glued if you can. If you're not feeling stretchy today, you can always just kick that back heel up and swivel the hips towards the back of the mat. But if you can, see if you can keep it tapped down. You can even use a block here. And then we're going to twist into a revolved triangle pose. So right arm reaches up, left arm reaches down. One more breath here. Keep trying to slide the hips underneath you. Right hand comes down. We're going to walk back towards the middle, turn both toes so they're parallel to the back of the mat. And just melt down. So for this one, you can let your head rest on the mat, or you can walk your hands behind you. Walk the hands back underneath you, find an, in, an inclined or a half lift. Nice. And now we're going to walk the hands over towards the left foot and then fold over that left leg. Find that half lift, turn the left toes towards the top of the mat. Right foot stays exactly where it is. Right hand comes to the mat. Left hand comes to the thigh. Start to lift up. This is probably enough. Or if you did it on the other side and you want to try it over here, you can take this revolved triangle. You can always use a block underneath or you can bring your hand to your thigh and just reach that left hand out behind you. It's really kind of challenging to twist the lower back when you're in a standing shape. Nice, both hands are going to come down by either side of that front foot. And then we're going to step forward into a wide stance forward fold now. And then I'm gonna turn so you can see me, but you can stay right where you are. So we're gonna, from this wide stance forward fold, turn the toes out, the heels in, 
I'm using my black. We're coming into a malasana. We're going to see if we can hold this for about four or five rounds of breath for about 30 seconds, which is a little bit longer. So you might want that black underneath where your seat is going to land. And then we're just going to sit down into that malasana shape. Like I said, if you're at the top of the mat, that's perfect. You can stay there. Otherwise, uh, I'm coming down onto my black. If you don't have a black, you don't have after you can you can use muscle strength um but as we're targeting the hips the block is kind of nice to help here so just bringing the elbows inside the knees hands to heart center and the block takes a lot of the stress and strain out of this pose so you can practice that hip shape without having to worry about the feet or the balance or anything else like I said, about 30 seconds here. So if you're not using a prop and you need to take a break, just find a forward fold and then come back when you can. Nice. Last breath here. And we're just going to Come back into that forward fold. So using your hands to help you, lift the hips, forward fold, block comes down, toes face the top of the mat. And turn back around here. Grab onto pinky or with pinky fingers onto big toes, elbows fold out to the side, bend down between the legs. Maybe rock a little to the left and to the right. Inhale, half lift. And then we're going to just find your way down onto your seat. So I like that curtsy squat, right? So you just sit on down and come all the way down onto your back. So nothing like coming all the way down to the ground here. Moving that block out of the way, putting your knees on the mat, and just letting your feet kind of rock from side to side. We're gonna come into a nice uh, restorative shoelace here. So left foot is on the mat, right foot crosses, and then you're going to scoop both legs in so the knees come towards your body. So everything is kind of lined up with the sternum so the knees are centered, maybe squeezing them together so that they're as close to the middle as possible. And then you can see that I have to lift my head up to grab onto my feet and then roll back down. And this should create a nice stretch in the outer hips. More so on one side than the other, probably. We call this shoelace. I guess it kind of does look like a shoelace. And when you're ready, we're just going to switch it out. So bringing the right foot to the mat, cross the left leg on the top. Make sure you start with the hips and the shoulders square. And then we're going to lift back up, grabbing onto both feet, pulling them close, enjoying that nice deep stretch here. Go ahead and let go of your shoelace. Bring your both feet, both of your feet to the mat here. Take a little wiggle and a squiggle. Maybe let the knees float side to side in that windshield wiper. And take a nice easy twist here. So your feet are still bent or your knees are still bent. Your feet are still on the mat. Hands go out into a T-shape and then just let 
the knees fall over towards the left. If the floor is too far, this black is super handy. If you're not feeling anything, if this is too gentle of a twist, you can just stack this left foot on top of the right knee, which is a little bit too much for me. So. your hands up nice and long. We're just going to lift the knees back up. Taking that twist to the other side, block or no block, it's up to you. You can look over the left shoulder or the right shoulder. Come on back up through center. Let's take a nice supported inversion here. So that block, if you have it, or the bolster, if you prefer, we're going to slide that underneath the hips. So let's see if we can work a little bit deeper than we normally do. So normally I go to the first level on my block, but today I'm going to go just a tiny bit higher. So I'm going to turn the block so it's on that kind of on the edge there. Not the tallest edge, the second edge. I don't even know how to describe that. Um, so it's like the, the outside edge. Uh, and then slide that underneath my sacrum there. So I have to come up onto my tippy toes to get into the shape. But then once the block is in place, then my feet rest nicely on the mat. I have kind of short legs, so you might not need to do quite so much maneuvering. So this is going to open up your heart enough so that you can actually kind of use your head to prop you up squeeze your shoulder blades together and come down onto the outsides of your arms there onto your triceps and that's really going to lift your ribs are going to lift your heart space is going to lift it's a bit more of a back bend here so if this creates any discomfort or unsteadiness absolutely back out or if there's some other reason that you shouldn't be doing inversions like these. And go ahead and skip this and just take a regular bridge. Now very slowly, start to walk the shoulders out from underneath you so that you can come down onto the shoulder blades there on the mat. We're going to be here for about five more breaths.
then we're going to come all the way back down. So walking your feet in a little closer, lifting the hips up, and then rolling down. You can take whatever shape kind of calls to you here. I like either a happy baby or an apanasana to counter pose that back bend. Just kind of moving intuitively into whatever, whatever shape feels good. And then from here, finding your way when you're ready, when you're done with all of the last minute movements, finding your way to a reclined butterfly, right? So Supta Baddha Konasana, the soles of the feet together, the knees splay out. You can prop up the knees with those blocks if that feels good, or just bring the feet together, relax the shoulders and let the hips fall down. Hands can rest wherever they feel good. At any time, if the butterfly pose doesn't serve you, you can stretch your legs out long. Coming back to your breath. Adding gentle movement to fingers and toes. Rolling towards one side and pausing there.
working your way back to any seat that feels right, feels good, feels comfortable. Once you find your way back to your seat, come back to your breath. Just notice the rise and the fall of the heart space, the rise and fall of the belly. Taking note if your breath isn't deep enough to really move your body, or maybe your belly doesn't move at all. Notice what kind of breath, the quality of your breath here. And just notice without judgment, without being attached. Go ahead and bring hands to heart center. Maybe bow your head if you choose. Thank you for joining me on the mat today. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Namaste.